Inside Mercer Basketball with Coach Bob Hoffman and your host, Rick Cameron. Brought to you by Wild Wing Cafe. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Wild Wing at the Shops at River Crossing. We're here to talk Mercer Basketball again with Head Coach Bob Hoffman. Coach, uh, normally we uh, discuss two games between shows, but the way the schedule worked out uh, this time and the taping process, we've got three shows, or three games yeah. to recap, winning two of those three, which really uh, improved us getting back into the flow of things in the SOCON. Let's just take a look at the three games. Let's start with the overview of the uh, game last Thursday with VMI, a 68-50 win. Yeah, our guys played extremely good defense, uh, uh, held them to uh, really not hitting their norms, uh, two great scores on their team, yep. Ellaby and Peterson. Right. Uh, they did score, but not to what the levels they had in previous games. Uh, Peterson had 46 on us the last time out we played them. So it was, it was great how our guys uh, were ready for the challenge after a disappointing loss at Furman. Uh, the mindset, uh, we found a way to get in there and, uh, and we just worked really hard. And of course, uh, Jordan Strawberry wasn't with us in that game. And, right. Uh, Rashad Lewis had eight assists to one turnover. Just a tremendous game. We had multiple guys step up and make great plays for us. Really did a great job on the boards, Coach. 44 to 27, your advantage. Dez Ringer almost had a double with nine points and eight rebounds. Yeah, he, he played at a high level. He's been rebounding. Uh, he, he's in the best shape he's been in since he's been here and continues to figure out ways to help our team. Uh, if he could get more touches and get yep. more scoring opportunities and finish more plays, it would really help our team down the stretch. And as I said, uh, you pointed out a uh, great job by Rashad to step yeah. up. Those eight assists, one turnover, you'll take that every night of the week. Yeah, I mean, that's tremendous. Eight to one. I mean, most people would like to have two to one, and he was eight yep. to one on that night and made tremendous looks and finds and found a way to, for easy finishes, which was great for us. All right, then a quick turnaround on Saturday, ETSU coming to town. We've said all year, as everyone else has, ETSU has not only tremendous talent with their starting five, but it goes all the way down the bench. Yeah, they're deep. <laughs> coach Forbes is a great coach. Uh, uh, we, we battled and we battled. Uh, Jordan Strawberry was back. We started Rashad. Jordan traveled all the way back from California, got into making about 11 a.m. after flying all night. Uh, probably still played him too much uh, in the midst of what he'd been through, tough times uh, with his grandfather's passing. And, yes. Um, but I, I loved how he competed. I loved how our team competed. We made multiple runs at them. Yep. And it was a game of runs. and. Uh, they got the last one. We were up seven with about seven and a half left and weren't able to finish it. Uh, we had a lot of live ball turnovers in that stretch, which led to easy layups for them, yeah. which you can't do to anybody, but for sure with a team like that, that's explosive. And yeah. uh, they got a few dunks in that that changed the momentum and kept us from winning the game. The success of a, a team can be attributed to being unselfish. A lot of times that's giving up of yourself or your team, taking charges. Did a great job in that game of doing that. Yeah, it gave us a great opportunity. We had too many turnovers. They had a few. Also, we had six charges in the game. Uh, Rashad got a couple in the middle against big guys as we were matched up in there. Uh, we talked about it. We've been working on it uh, more and more, trying to get better at the new ruling of yeah. when you can jump, when you can't, when you're secondary, when you're primary, all those things can be confusing, but at the end of it, you just got to play really hard and you've got to give your team an opportunity. And our guys gave ourselves uh, a chance to win that game. We just weren't able to finish it. Then uh, going, uh, finishing uh, one and one on that home stand. What I thought, Coach. Yeah, great uh, crowds. Great crowd, crowds. absolutely. And then I thought a very pivotal contest uh, going on the road. A very good Sanford team that's played so well. They were coming off of a big win, overtime win on Sunday. I thought that was a real pivotal game, and I know you had stressed to the guys, we're that close, we just need to finish, and indeed they did. Yeah, um, I was thrilled for our guys. I mean, we did have some soul searching and talked and talked and communicated. And, uh, you know, you just want them to be have that success. We've been working hard, and we've played pretty consistent for a long while, even against East Tennessee State, we had a great game, we just didn't yep. didn't get the W. Against Furman, we had a great game and didn't get the W. Um, and that's gonna happen sometimes, 
and we're uh, like I mentioned and you said and I told them we're so close we got to focus on what we can control yep make sure you understand that there's some things a guy can make shots or uh, even if you do everything right they can make a great play but we can we only can do the things that are under our control and I thought our guys did that in the Sanford game and we had multiple players step up yep. Rashad Lewis had eight assists to no turnovers, another big game there. Uh, and then we were 10 of 14 from threes in the second half, ended up 14 of 25 for the yep. night. Uh, we still turned the ball over a little too much for me. Yep. But uh, if you shoot 10 of 14 from threes, you're probably going to have a chance to win the game. That barely was enough. Yeah. Even at that, yeah, that exactly. was barely enough to get the win. Four guys in double figures, great balance scoring, yeah, but it just. Was, as we swing over yeah. to Steph, when, when Mercer's playing well the last couple of years and Steph's getting double doubles, life is good. Well, I mean, he was 4-4 four four from the three-point line. Uh, Tyree clipped some shots of him hitting shots last year in that same building. Yep. Hopefully that gave him some good vibe, but uh, he didn't start off very good. Mm. He missed the first few, but he, he knocked down those shots after, after he got going, and they were critical in the second half. He had a couple corner threes that went in. Uh, those are the kind of things you got to have in it. his rebounding. Him yeah. and, uh, I think Dez had five offensive rebounds yeah, in that did. game. He so, did. I mean, our rebounding, I, we ended up beating them 43 to 30. Is that That's right? That's correct. 43 to 30. That's pretty good photographic memory. Yeah, I you're doing great, that. Coach. Every number's right on. You're, you're I, on. Yeah, photogenic would be, be better if I was photogenic instead of photographic. But anyway, that was uh, was good how our guys battled possession as I talked to them. In the, in the huddles there at the end, we got to keep believing in ourselves. We got to believe in our teammates, and we got to possession by possession work hard no matter what the outcome is. And did a great job of taking advantage of what they gave you after you run an offensive set. The made threes, 14 made threes on 25. Yeah, attempts. that was big. And then they had several lot looks at it late. The very last possession. Yep. Uh, we switched. We went small, and uh, their least percentage guy ended up taking the three. Uh, which it still looked like it could go oh, in, yeah. and I was thankful it didn't. It was, it, was a, it was a great win and a relief to our guys. After working hard, like we mentioned, some of those haven't turned out the way we wanted, yeah. but last night definitely did against a very good ball team and a, a really good coach. Great win on the road. Stephon Jelks with not only his first double-double of the season, but the first of anyone on the team thus far. Might as well have picked a, a good week. Let's feature Stephon Jelks. Let's go after our break yeah, Steph. to campus and talk with Steph. We'll do that and be back with more Inside Mercer Basketball. the game plan rush into the wild wing cafe and tackle one of our new steakhouse burgers 100 percent angus 100 percent great it's an all-star lineup that can win you tickets to the biggest games of the year where For over 20 years, Mercer has relied on Forsyth Street Orthopedics. Their team of physicians keeps players on the court. Forsyth Street Orthopedics and Ortho Georgia have merged together into one practice, and we're stronger than ever with 26 physicians and five regional offices. As a graduate of Mercer and a partner of Ortho Georgia, we are proud to sponsor and take care of Mercer athletes. Ortho Georgia, getting better together. Go Bears! Well, we're back on campus in Hawkins Arena as we continue with our player spotlights on Inside Mercer Basketball. Today, Stefan Jelks, junior forward from Marietta. Steph, uh, as we start to talk uh, briefly about your time at Mercer, I've got to admit, I'm not supposed to have any favorite players, but i got to admit, you, from day one, when you stepped on the Mercer campus, the energy you bring and the passion for this game, you've become an instant favorite of a lot of folks. Tell us about a younger Steph Jelks growing up. Has this the type of personality that's always been within you? Uh, yes, it has. Um, just growing up, I just loved having a knack for the ball and just bringing energy. Like, I mean, it usually just started from like, I think it really actually started from having family reunions and stuff. Yeah. Because like, my whole family just brings energy, you know, it's like having a good time and all that. So I think it just transpired into the court. Let's talk more about that, uh, Steph. What were some of the things you did? Was it always athletics, or were there other things you enjoyed growing up that made you the person you are today? Well, actually, my first sport was baseball. Yeah. And so, growing up, I was a huge baseball 
player, like playing baseball. And then, you know, I got introduced to basketball because um, one of my mom's coworkers' sons played with a little AAU team and I was pretty tall at the age and so started playing basketball and then ever since then I just love playing. Now walk us on through North Cobb Christian. Did you also not play football at in high school? Yeah, I played football freshman and junior year. Uh, I kind of regret it because I, <laughs> I didn't like I didn't like that type of physicality on the football field. But I mean, it was just a great experience just to try a different sport, you yeah. know, and just getting out there and just having fun. Tell us about the, the high school, about North Cobb Christian, the environment you had there, what kind of school and how much you enjoyed it. Oh, it was a great school. I mean, it was about like 200 some kids in the high school, you know, small community like. Um, I still talk to some teachers today yeah. from back then. Just It was just that close knit. Everybody enjoyed coming to the basketball games. Um, it was just like a family environment like it is here. All right, uh, your third year here. Refresh our memory of the fans who don't know why you chose Mercer. Um, I chose Mercer um, because, I mean, it's close to home and it was a good, um, I like the business school, like the business school here, I'm a marketing major. Okay. And, um, you know, I just visited a lot of unofficial visits with Coach Hoffman and actually Coach Wright, that's at FIU now recruiting yep. me. And um, just, you know, just to get, um, the relationship I had with him and then that transpired to Coach Hoffman and all the other coaches. I took like three unofficial visits and I finally took an official visit. And then, you know, just just clicked like that. I just felt like family every time I came. All right, as we sit here today, as compared to the very first day you stepped foot on this campus, how different a person are you today than when you got here? Um, I feel like I'm more of like a outgoing, like getting like to know a lot of different people. Like when I first got here, I was kind of like just sticking with the basketball team, you know, because yep. I didn't. Yep really understand like meeting new people. I didn't really want to meet new people. I just wanted to stay around the basketball team and stuff. And as I got older, like until now, like just, you know, branching out, meeting new people, like connecting and networking, it's really helped me out a little bit. As I watch you, Steph, I can see a look on your face some days as serious as it can be. And then I can see you being the biggest cut up on the bus. But what I really enjoy in watching you, preparations, game day. Walk us through what makes you get ready for a game in your preparation to play on this floor. I mean, just the game itself gets me ready. I mean, just knowing that we have a game the next day or whatever just gets me really excited. I mean, usually the night before I can't sleep. You know, I'm just watching just old film of me and stuff like that sometimes. But on game day, it's just, just the mindset of I just got to get it done. Like, I joke around and stuff like that before practice and stuff, but like an hour or two before the game, like I shut everything off. Yeah. It's just all focus. I know when things are going well, when I sit and look on the floor and I see you bending over, slapping the floor, I know <laughs> things are going good. At what point did you pick up that little tradition of hitting the floor? Actually, I've been doing that since I was 10 years old. Um, my AAU team, we were um, Georgia fast break at the time. Like before every game, like every time we got our first two points, you know, it's not as fast as it is now, right. but like, Every time we got a score, we all go back on defense and just slap the floor, <laughs> like just to set the momentum and it just brings a lot of energy to the game. So that's been everything. That's that's been the thing since I was ten. Yeah. All right. Uh, there's been debate. Is this the toughest non-conference schedule we've had? Uh, we could debate that all day. But in your eyes, your third year here, uh, how has the tough schedule prepared us for later on the teams we played already, the Floridas and the Clemsons and Auburns that we will have played? I mean, those teams are, they're a pretty tough team. It's pretty good. I mean, I just feel like it's preparing us mentally because like those games we didn't finish or play quite as well. So I feel like these, those games that we were playing that we we're losing, it's making like a, helping us mentally. Like, cause usually most teams would like just start breaking down and like figuring out, oh, we're not that good. We're not mm -hmm. that good. But I feel like the mindset we're having, it was like, we got to stick together because it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish at the end of the season. Steph, you're a great rebounder, especially offensively. Uh, many a nights last year and a couple of times you, I look out on the floor and you're literally battling as our leading rebounder. In games this year, how comforting is it when you're on the floor and you see a ringer, a fistler, and Nganga there to assist you in cleaning up the glass? I mean, it, it helps a lot, but I mean, I feel like that's like the thing I bring to the team. like. Like that's like my main reason why I'm on the court is to rebound and bring energy. And I mean, it helps a lot, but I still feel like it's my job to get the ball. And when I do that, I'm helping bring energy to our team and I'm helping us win. Now, 
that was a serious answer, but the lighthearted answer, you still feel you can shoot a three if you need to. Correct? All right, I definitely, I definitely, if I'm wide open, I'm definitely, <laughs> this is definitely going up, Rick. <laughs> All right, uh, Steph, give us the mindset of this team. You're an old timer, and uh, you, you know, we look to you as the heartbeat and soul of this team. Give us in your heart how you feel this team can do as we about to embark on this conference schedule. I honestly feel like this team could win like every the whole SoCon championship regular season and um, postseason. I just feel like we just have to have the mindset of that we're not doing so well right now. And so we just have to stay focused on what we could grow on and how we could get better each and every day. And so when time the conference comes and the close games come, how we finish those out, that we played the teams earlier, how that um, transpires into conference and finish those games up. All right, Steph, you guys are a tremendous influence. Final question I want to ask you for the young people that come to this arena and watch you that might be watching our show today. Give some advice to our younger kids who may want to sit in this seat where you are one day. Just hard work and just determination. If you really love what you love, basketball, or even if it's not basketball, whatever you like doing, just know you just got to push it. And if you really want something bad, you'll keep working for it. All right, Steph, thanks for being with us today. And it is a joy to watch you play basketball. Yes, we sir. love the passion you bring to the floor. Thank you, Rick. Stephon Jelks will be back with more as we return to Wild Wing in just a moment with more Inside Mercer Basketball. I have purchased uh, five Jeeps here at Five Star. And my sister-in-law from Florida actually came up and purchased a uh, Jeep here. The way you're treated, the uh, uh, satisfaction, the service, just overall good experience. And, you know, for me to come back that many times speaks for itself. Well, we're back to talk more inside Mercer basketball. Head coach Bob Hoffman, coach, it's time for our segment, the Making Occupational Medicine Look at the Southern Conference. Uh, before we look at the We'd numbers. We'd like to thank all our sponsors. We want to thank That's all of our sponsors. some great sponsors. sponsors. Yeah. Unbelievable. Wild Wing Cafe has been with us from the get-go. Uh, Rick Howard, we thank you. Yep. Thank, I mean, unbelievable food. You need to come out here to Wild Wing if you hadn't been. Uh, bacon cheeseburger. Really, really good. Really Bacon, good. egg, and cheeseburger. Really That's good. That's my favorite. I or like that. Or just go with the wings. You can never yeah, go wrong with yeah, the wings. <laughs> yeah. Or they have a really good chef salad that's a little yeah, different, yeah, too. Okay. All right. Well, now that you've got our appetite uh, ready to eat some food, yeah. let's, uh, let's appetite on some uh, Southern Conference basketball. Your overview, uh, any surprises uh, how the SoCon has rolled out now that everybody's been in conference play a couple no, of weeks? And I, I think there's still going to be more surprises as we go through it. Um, I know I was talking to Jeff Cabe last night, who's over men's basketball for the league, and yep. uh, by text message we were texting back and forth, and he feels like this may be the deepest the league's been in a long, long time from top to bottom where anybody can win, and he, he still thinks there's going to be some surprises too. Uh, I, I, all the teams are so close, yep. and, and yep. you look at the scores, and it's just a few possessions here and there. Uh, so even though East Tennessee's undefeated and Early. doing really good, mm -hmm. and uh, you got Chattanooga coming in at our place, they've only got one loss that they lost at Greensboro. Greensboro's had some great wins uh, too. So there's multiple teams. Furman's had a, the best start in 30 years uh, for uh, there's in, in men's basketball in the SoCon. 30 years, yeah. their best start. Uh, we contributed to that a little bit, uh, but I, I think there's more craziness still to be had yep. in this league. I just hope we're on the good part of that craziness. Coach, I would make the argument that a lot of the reasons that this league has such great quality basketball and players, it begins with the head coaches. You guys, there's tremendous, your colleagues in the league are tremendous coaches and do a great job recruiting of getting players here and then coaching them up when they get here. Yeah, I think you're right. And then when you look at the non-conference schedule and what people have done in the league and then what our our league RPI is, that tells you the strength of our yep. league and, the, and what we're able to do against the non-Power 5 leagues of what our conference was able to do this, this last fall is really incredible. Yep. And the last two years has been pretty good. So I, I, I think there's a lot of good teams. And when you talk about just the regular games, the regular season, it's one thing. But then yep. you think about what could happen on neutral floor with all those teams being in one place in Asheville, that's the thing that Jeff Cabe was so excited about, as you yep. would be as yep. being a part of the conference office, uh, being excited for great games. 
Well, as I, I, I like to go online and check what newspapers in the cities of the other Southern Conference schools and hear quotes and so forth. And, you know, we'd like to think, well, we're the team that's concentrating on getting better and peaking in those three days in March at the right. tournament. But everybody else is thinking the same thing. No, no, their no. players are knowing they're toughening up, getting ready for that tournament yeah. and those three magical days that could lead to big things. Yeah, and, and you never know when that's going to happen. It could happen anytime. We've seen it throughout the history of conference tournaments. It, uh, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot to get started. And it can be one game. We're hopeful that one game on the road for us will get yeah. us going in the right direction. I, I love how we competed last night, but there are multiple teams that can still do great things in this league and yeah. have already proven it. And in the, we've only had four or five games. Right. Most, everybody plays a few more tonight. So uh, we're excited about where we are. We'd love to have a few more wins. That hadn't happened, but there's still a lot in front of us. And we're, we're going to stay forward focused and not pass possess. I guess if you could just take the wins and losses of the teams thus far and kind of review of maybe in your mind what you expected them to be at this point in the season, I would say that UNCG's record is maybe a little bit surprising. They have a tremendous 12-5 and five record. Yeah. They did a great job. But and they had – Lonzo's one of the best shooters in the league, and then White may be an MVP candidate. Yeah. Uh, he's a double-double machine himself. So they have multiple weapons, uh, and uh, I mean, they, they've done a great job. They've had yeah. a great year, and I, I expected going in, they were going to be better, and people were giving them credit for because of the returners, and they've definitely lifed that out already. Well, as uh, you've talked about many, many times, Coach, boy, I tell you, you better take care and be uh, – uh, every home game, you better try to take care of your home uh, surface because when you yeah. travel on the road in this league, it's tough. Uh, we've got a big one we're going to talk about in just a moment, Chattanooga. Then we go back on the road for two. So uh, you got to really protect the home arena, uh, which we've done a great job the last Yeah, uh, we need years. to do that. We need to find a way to get a W at home against a really good team. All right, and we're going to talk about that team coming up next, Chattanooga, when we come back with more Inside Mercer Basketball. Hey, all you Bear fans. I know we're having a great time at this game. It's exciting, fun. We're getting after it. If you want to have a good time after this game, you need to go over to Margarita's in Mercer Village. They have amazing Mexican food, and they're going to take care of you. All kinds of specials. You can find what you want. Look at my body. It's working good for me. Come on over and check them out at Mercer Village, Margarita's. Well, as we enter our last segment of this week's show, got a big game coming up on Saturday at Hawkins Arena against Chattanooga. But just before we go there, Coach, let's briefly recap our Sonic Player of the Week. Well, I mean, we had a couple guys we thought could help be that guy, but we, we talked about Rion Holland. He's, Absolutely. He's had a really good week and uh, stepped up and made big shot after big shot to put us in the position we were. Had an amazing run against East yeah. Tennessee. It uh, wasn't enough to get finished, but, he, but he, he had a great week. And the Marco delivery of the week. Well, uh, since we've done the radio show, we gave it to Rashad Lewis. He was 8-1. and one. Yep. And since then, he had a game against Samford that he had eight assists with no turnovers. So yeah. that's amazing. And uh, really, good. not only was he doing that, but he was guarding some really quick yeah. guys yeah. and putting pressure on Sanford's guards that really helped us get the win. All right, uh, game coming up on Saturday, the defending conference champions, the Chattanooga Mocs coming to town, Coach. Yeah, they've got uh, all kinds of, they got the player of the year preseason two years ago, Casey Jones, who got hurt, yep. who's now back. They got Trey McLean, who was the player of the year, and now's this year's preseason player of the year. And they got the second leading shot blocker in the country, and Justin Toyo, and I think he's in the top 10 in field goal percentage in the country also. So those three guys alone, and to me, the one that makes them all go is Pryor. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was watching the game this morning um, against Furman that they won at their place, and there was at least four under three-second shot clock shots that he took wow. and made, and he's done that throughout his career, and yeah. he doesn't get credit all the time to me. He is the MVP of that team. Yeah. One thing of interest to me, Coach, as a basketball fan, is that when a game's in progress, a guy blocks a shot, he's prevented that team from scoring. Right. If his team goes down, that's a, maybe a four-point swing. Right. If you went on that scenario, Toyo on the season, 62 blocks and 12 steals. Yeah, he, I mean, he's, he's been great. I mean, he is great. Uh, uh, last year at our place, uh, Big Fish gave him a little bit. Yep. We'll be interested to see how that 
plays out. I hope he remembers some of those plays. I'm talking about Justin oh, and Fish. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, both of them remember those <laughs> plays and what took place. Yeah. Because he got frustrated. Yeah. He got really yeah. frustrated, and he can. Uh, you know, we're going to throw three big guys at him. They have a couple of themselves. Um, uh, they're 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 deep. They've had great wins on the road. Uh, they they understand how to play. They won at Dayton. They won at Illinois. Uh, they went to the tournament last year. So all those guys are back. Uh, Matt McCall's done a great job with them. But that doesn't mean you automatically win. It doesn't mean uh, that we're going to just show up and hand them the game and shake their hand and say, uh, yeah. you know, good yeah. luck. Uh, I really think our guys are going to be up to the task. And I'm excited about the opportunity for our team and our program against a really talented good. Well, I, I said a moment ago how I felt the Sanford game was pivotal, and it was pivotal to win the game that night. But again, the confidence you win from that game going into the Chattanooga game. Yeah, we've been really close on a few that could have helped us, I think. The Furman game, the Auburn game, that if we would have found a way to finish those games could have gave us a little bump. I'm excited to see what the Sanford win will do to our mentality of uh, our mental approach or our mindset or how, how you know what kind of juice is going to be flowing. I know we're going to be excited no matter what yeah. because we're playing at home and we're going to have a good crowd. But uh, I think beyond that is what does it do to us uh, in our mind, our positive thought process of what we can get done that we were able to finish on the road against a really good team. And uh, you know I, I'm excited to see what that is. And then on top of that, there's so many good things happening in the arena. The Mercer Maniacs are giving away all kinds of prizes. Yep. Those are the things that. A lot of programs don't have that uh, over nine years we've been able to build with a lot of people's help and that's that's what's fun yeah when you see what we have in our arena and uh, we're hopeful that our guys can walk out on that floor and use some of that juice when things aren't going quite so good yeah. with that home home crowd advantage uh, to get over the hump and having won now two of the last three great opportunity on Saturday against Chattanooga uh, this team uh, is can still get right back in the hunt real oh, quick yeah. and uh, may have a great year yeah well we're I mean I, we've all talked about it. the players have talked about it, the staff talked about it you know we've all felt like we we're gonna get on a run at some point we're just hoping to be sooner than later and it hasn't happened exactly the way we wanted to after playing a really hard schedule at the beginning of the year but I, I think we're figuring more and more out about what our team looks like and the character of our team. And we're still not a finished product by any stretch of imagination, but I really like uh, the direction we're headed right now. Should be a lot of fun. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for this week. Hope to see you again next week. See you at Hawkins Arena, the next home game. That's gonna do it for this week's Inside Mercer Basketball.